In this video, we're going to be dealing with Viper Enterprise deployment. Deployment with Viper Enterprise starts at the site level. We'll double click our site and then we'll navigate to deployment credentials. Here we have two types of credentials, remote credentials and local impersonation credentials. For a domain deployment, we're just going to use remote credentials and we'll add them here. We can put in our user account, administrator in this case, the password for our administrator account, and the domain upon which our domain administrator account exists. Note that this should be a domain administrator account. You can click OK, then you should click Apply and then OK. But OK alone will just work. At this point, we want to set up our firewall. Sunbelt Software Support has an excellent article on dealing with firewalls and everything you need to do to set them up properly. You can get there by going to support.sunbeltsoftware.com and learning for Article 1935. There you can see all the ports and port exceptions you need to make in order to properly secure your firewall. Alternatively, you can just turn your firewall off during deployment. This is a little riskier because it's insecure, but it's also a lot easier. Here in our installation, we've already turned the Viper firewall off, so we're going to be doing it just in the simple method. The first thing you'll need to do is right click and add an agent. I'll choose my policy for the agent and choose the machine the agent's going to be installed upon and push OK. And I'll choose to deploy the agent there by pushing yes. Here we can see the agent's already started up. It's not installed yet, but it's on Sunbelt XP. What's interesting about this now is that we can choose pending deployments and we can see that it's in progress. Furthermore, we can click deployment history and see if it's already tried to deploy. But since it hasn't, we'll go to pending deployment. Now you can see that it has. The microinstaller is deployed. I can click on agents and you can see the actual status of deploying agent. Pretty neat. My Sunbelt XP box is now getting ready. During this process, what's happening is a little microinstaller is being placed onto your machine, and that microinstaller is actually pulling the Viper site service for a deployment package. And you can see now it's deploying the agent. What this means is the microinstaller has said, hey, I'm ready, I want to install onto this machine, but I need a deployment package to do so, and it retrieves that. Now that it's installing the agent, it's actually retrieved that deployment package and it's installing it right now. The process for this takes about a minute, maybe two minutes. We've actually done it this way because during this process you can choose to reboot your agent. Additionally, you can look at the definitions that are happening right now. Since it's updating definitions, we can look at deployment history, see that the microinstaller is installed, and there's no planning deployments. So we'll click on our agent and just watch it update definitions for a while. It says it needs a reboot, but in reality, we can just let it sit here, and we can wait for it to update its definitions, and then we can issue a reboot command from the console. It's actually quite neat. What's happening here is the Viper site service is dividing all of the portions of your definitions into 67 kilobyte chunks, and those chunks are being delivered one at a time to this agent, and the agent will then put them together and form the Viper definitions for it. We've done it this way because it's a lot easier on a network to just handle small 67 kilobyte chunks than it is to handle one huge definition file of about 60 megabytes. So it takes a little bit on one to two agents. Don't be frustrated. That's just normal because we've designed Viper to work in small environments and tremendous environments with 50 or 60,000 agents or theoretically even more. I will speed up the video just for a minute because I don't want to waste a minute of your time. We'll do this a little bit later again when I update the agent and set it for a reboot. Now the definitions are complete. Since the definitions are complete, this means that the machine now needs to reboot in order to install the Viper drivers. The current definition 5716 is on there. So, since it says it needs a reboot, I'll give it one by right click, agent commands, issue restart command. The agent by default sends a message that it has encountered a condition that requires it to reboot, which is fine with me, and the default time is 60 seconds. So I'll send it OK, wait for the message to get processed through the Viper site service, and once the message is processed, it'll tell the agent it needs to reboot. At that point, I'll fast forward the video a bit so you can see that the agent is rebooted and it is completely installed. It's gone away, now I'll fast forward. And as you can see now, the agent is completely installed. It has current definitions, it has the current agent software version, and it's ready. Just for the heck of it, I'll right-click it, 
and I'll give it a scan. I'll go down to scanning and then quick scan. In just a few seconds that'll queue up and that'll let me know for sure that my agent is indeed installed. And as you can see now it's scanning memory. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, contact support at support at sunbeltsoftware.com.